Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to my uh, United States of America campaign. Okay, so there's been a couple of days I think in between uh, the, the last recording I'm talking about in the in-game calendar, so I'm not entirely sure wh what is causing the slowdown. Um, a Supreme Court Justice just died. Hmm, coincidence? I don't think so. Um, questioning the dream, what is this? Hold on. So, so basically, let me just explain what's going on in terms of the the, the calendar. So, I, I definitely think at least some part of this, though, is the CPU. Uh, something else is sucking up its energy, and it's partly the OBS, but maybe it's the settings. I might have them too high, so it's using too much of the CPU, because I let it run for a couple of days, and it was taking about four Mississippi counts to uh, get through a single day. And then as soon as I hit start recording... It, I noticed that it, it slowed down, which we're going to get a count in a minute here. So what is this questioning the dream? Uh, let's see. He's driving. Poor man is driving home from his grind at the factory. His payday is weeks again. He wonders if he'll be able to eat until then. He questions why he can barely afford the necessities while his rude, lazy supervisor owns a second car and a vacation home in Florida. I know that feel, dude. Not right now, but I've been there. Commiserating his lot in life, he turns on the radio, another man speaks, his voice loud and commanding, he decries the state of America that squeezes the worker dry while funneling his wealth towards the upper classes. He calls for the wealth that belongs to the people to return to the people. The poor man listens to his word intently all the way back home. Ah, so is this something with, uh, is Gus Hall getting a bit more popular? Uh... University student looks over her American history essay, knowing that a professor will scold her for how unpatriotic it is. I'm going to tell a funny story about a essay uh, I once wrote. Okay, but after this. Uh, she used to think her nation was the greatest. Now she's been reading things. She doesn't have a sense of pride. Uh, let's see, student activist group she's going to probably attend. Um... Let's see. A black man is... Okay. Huh, so a black man's going to get put on the ballot. Something is changing in America. The ideal of the American dream no longer holds the luster it once did, and anger is beginning to mount. Decades of broken promises are finally catching up with this country. Unless something changes, the people may well turn to ideas once considered anthema. The system begins to crack. So, um, the, the essay thing, I, 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 I once was... Uh, uh, we were taking. I was taking this class. Oh, hold on. let's get a Mississippi count on the days. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven. So yeah, it's taking almost twice as long to go through the days once I hit record on the OBS. Now I don't have the best processor in the world, but uh, some something is going on here. Um, but I think it's going at a reasonable enough pace that we can continue recording this. But afterwards, I'm gonna. Maybe take a look at uh, the CPU usage and see what's going on. Actually, you know what? I could just do a cut and figure that out right now. And you know what? I'm going to let the calendar keep going in the meantime uh, unless there's like an event. Okay? Be right back. Okay, I'm back. And yeah, right now I was just looking through my task manager. Um, there's, there's more CPU being used right now by OBS than... Um, than Hearts of Iron 4 itself is using. And I think I know the reason for that. It's because I've been playing with the uh, the stream rate uh, for different, because I've been playing other non Hearts of Iron 4 games. And Hearts of Iron 4, it's not a very graphically intense game, even when we're in the middle of the war and we're zooming in or whatever at the tanks. Uh, so basically, I have it right now uh, recording at a level that it would be very, it, it's like it's got, a, so it'll have like a good frame rate. And a good um, like no, frame capture rate is what I mean for like if I'm playing a fast-paced game like Hades. So what I'm gonna do in the future, meaning like as soon as we do the next episode, is um, I'm going to just set up. Unfortunately, there's no way to set up in different scenes in the OBS a way for me to say, okay, I want I want the capture rate to be this for this game, for this way, and then this and this one, I have to always manually change it. So I'm just gonna try to remember to manually change it after this episode, because I don't think I can actually do it in the middle of an episode. Although I could try, but I don't think it's gonna do anything, because it's mid-recording. Anyway, let's look at these necessary precautions. Um, stakes were too high to leave anything to risk as far as the law was concerned. In these difficult times, he needed judges who would see things from his point of view. 
We got two possibilities. We need to get some people to give up seats, or we need to make some more seats. Um, we're just going to encourage some early retirements because the center cannot hold is going to destroy the NPP. And then I don't know what's going to happen. Gus Hall's up to 6% popularity. He's actually about to become more popular than us right now. Um, I just think there's some, going to be some serious consequences if we do that. So we're just going to do unity above all. Um, and we're going to try to do, you know, kind of push on them the switch in time to save nine. Because also this, it's the civil rights legislation. It's way too strong. It's my understanding from having had conversations with other people um, who, who know the mod a bit better than me. Um, we basically passed the second most powerful version of the Civil Rights Act that could have been done. Um, the only one that would have been more powerful is if the NPP, I don't even know if it's a unified NPP or if it would have been just the NPPC, uh, would have been strong enough to just railroad through the bill, no compromising with the Republicans or Democrats at all. Uh, so it's it's pretty well ingrained by now. Plus, we got so much stability out of it. So we're just going to encourage some early retirements and then do unity above all. We're not going to do the um, uh, the courts being rearranged or whatever. Actually, shouldn't they have already been rearranged or something? Or should we have gotten an event? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh... But the unity will be enough. And then we're going to try to vote out Strom in 68. Or see if we can nominate somebody else. Hmm. Um. So, what, what was I, uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about. So, so I once took this class, and it was, it was called something like The Ancient World in Film. So, it was the second ever film related class that I had taken in university. And in both, if, here, here was the sense I got from both of them. I feel like the professors, uh, were overcompensating for it being a film class. So, we would have to watch, you know, Said a lot, you spent a lot of time watching things. So I swear I was reading and writing more in those classes than my regular ones. <laughs> uh, hold on a second. Uh, let's see. So we just find some intrigue, illicit hobbies, sexual depravities, financial transfers, just various sorts of blackmail and stuff. So um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just telling them they better get out while they still can or this is going to get released. Two of the judges immediately caved. The other two may prove to be a problem, a major problem. They have made no rash plans just yet. There exists a very real possibility they may swallow their pride and talk to the press about what lengths the president is willing to go to get his way. They better not talk. Okay, so a couple of them are basically saying, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. All right, interesting, interesting. So, this particular class, The Ancient World in Film, we were watching uh, movies and actually one TV show um, about, let's see, without a hitch. Okay, they all ended up resigning. Yeah, four judges were through to spend time with their families. The last dominoes begin to fall. Uh, the increasingly meek remnants of the center cried foul, insisting some foul play was at hand. The left didn't even try to hold back. One congressman having to be dragged from the hall outright accusing the president of treason. Their protestations fell on deaf ears, however. Indeed, across the South and Southwest, many of the far right's loyal supporters openly celebrated the move, hailing a triumphant return to the good old days. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's let's take a look at what the composition. I'm guessing it was the four it was four liberal judges that that we uh, we made retire. Uh, no, it's five conservatives and four liberals. Okay, well then maybe there were some young conserv or some old conservatives and say, hey, get out of here so we can put some young people in here. Bring in the bring in the judge in swaddling clothes, and it's just like, it's a baby with a gavel. Good, good. He has a little clan one KKK onesie on. <laughs> He's like, I can nominate whoever I want. Damn it, I'm the president. Uh, okay, so anyway, so we were watching a lot of um, films about the ancient world. So like. We watched the 1920s version of Ben-Hur. We watched a version of Cleopatra. 
Uh, we watched the Rome series, which is that's two seasons. That was a lot of watching, <laughs> which I love that show, but that was a lot to watch. And you, you got to read about it and, and write about it and like, you know, really, really take good note of it and stuff. Uh, anyway, so we, we watched Gladiator. Um, and uh, I don't like the movie Gladiator. I'm talking about the one with Russell Crowe, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Richard Harris. I'm not saying the movie's trash. There's definitely good parts in it. I think Richard Harris is great as Marcus Aurelius. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, in terms of his acting in that, is good. I think Russell Crowe does a decent enough job as the lead in that film. But there's just so much about it that... <laughs> It's 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 like some of it's a his there's a lot of a historical but like the whole central premise of that movie, with uh, trying to restore the republic and that Marcus Aurelius wanted that and and and, and like what these senators are supposed to be good guys or something even though we've seen how they act and it's like I guess they just what what are they cool guys just because they said hey we probably should do something about the plague that's ravaging Rome right now or whatever. Um, I just think it's a severely, severely overrated movie. And a big part of that, I think, is also because Hans Zimmer very clearly was ripping off Gustav Holtz when he made the soundtrack. But he's already been sued over that. Um, that that's all documented. Uh, but I was, like, the only one in the class who had any problems with that film, practically. And I wrote a very scathing essay about it. Uh, and I really thought the professor was going to hurt me over it. Uh, okay, so let's see. We have to choose a SCOTUS nominee. Well, we're Strom Thurmond, so of course he's going to pick a conservative. Uh, or is this now the retirements that are happening? Is this like... Yeah, because I just did it, and it says it's just five conservatives, four liberals. Unless it was like a conservative that that went away. I don't know. Maybe they should... It's fine. It's not a big deal. We haven't even had anything this whole campaign come up against the Supreme Court anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so, so anyway, I wrote a... I wrote an essay. Actually, maybe I should pull it up since we're killing time right now. But um, the way the way it would work is uh, one of our assignments. Sometimes we would write more than one thing. Um, wait, what? Uh, hold on, I'm trying to log into my thing here. Um, hmm. Okay, I guess I can't pull it up, but basically, um, yeah, it, it, I was I was just saying how I didn't really like a lot of the concepts in the movie, and they didn't really make sense, and like they could have done a version of the movie, like in that all the characters, none of them could have changed, and if at the end of the movie, like the main spoilers for a movie that's twenty years old, and and like if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you've seen it. You're the kind of person who's already seen Gladiator, but it's like. If Maximus hadn't died at the end of Gladiator, he would have, um, he, he, you know, let's say he didn't die. He kills Commodus, and then he, like, decides, okay, I'm going to marry the Emperor's sister, and I'm the new Emperor now. Everybody would have applauded. The Senate would have been just fine with it, because, like, oh, we have a new enlightened Emperor, just like Marcus Aurelius or whatever. Um, it, it just... Like, why is the Emperor's sister and the, and the former Emperor's daughter in favor of restoring the Republic? That makes no sense. Also, Mac, everything is so Americanized, like, like the whole the worship of the Roman gods and like there's like a freaking heaven like a Christian heaven and then and then even when he's talking with the African dude who also practices a completely different version of a pagan faith they still talk about like the afterlife and seeing their families again and I'm not trying to sound like some harsh non-family man I'm not that I, I you know but that, that those things are important but it's just like they try to make Maximus, it's like they try to turn him into this combination of of like George Washington, Cincinnati, and Jesus Christ himself, uh, and and it just it just doesn't work for me at all. And it's gonna be around forever. It's always gonna be like a classic in the genre, and there and there are some good things about it, but there are fundamental problems with that film that I don't like. Um, but I wish I could pull up my paper on it because I, I I'm pretty sure I was drinking when I was typing it and I, I really I really brought came down hard. But but just okay, we're gonna read this dance partner thing. Okay, no, this is this is stuff in Stonewall, so it's the uh So this is the, basically this is the gay district. Um Kisses Tark, 
John and Martin. How romantic. Hmm. Okay, so a couple dudes hanging out and kissing. Just dudes being dudes, dancing and kissing. Uh, okay. I don't know if those are like specific people. Um, whatever. Anyway, um, wait a minute. The Stonewall riots, aren't they going to be coming up? Yeah, because they were in 68, weren't they? Or was it 69? In the 60s, I'm sure the Stonewall riots happened then. It's like, are they going to be worse? Are they going to be harsher? Um, because of, like, Strom Thurmond or something? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Is it different under different presidents? I don't know. In Flames. Uh, as he prepared to make his closing remarks, Thurmond felt a strange peace watch over him amidst the thunderous applause of his faction, amidst the deafening silence of the center, amidst the commendation of the Republican Democrats and the roaring chants of the post uh, protesters outside. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so we could do unity above all now. We're going to, um, just because I'm afraid that if we do center cannot hold, like, we're going to get a Gus Hall coup or something eventually. I don't know. But if I want to do a Gus Hall campaign, I want to do a dedicated Gus Hall campaign. I don't want to stumble into him by accident. So unity above all. And, and like, I've already made, I've already explained my reasoning for all this, so we're doing that. Anyway. Uh, I'm not the president you expected, I'm not the one you wanted, but I'm the one you needed. Um, as he paused for, uh, let's see, who did what was necessary, oh yeah, who did what was necessary to prevent radical elements from stealing our nation on the path to certain social decay. He paused as the applause from his fellow men of the right drowned out all else. He briefly turned to the side, watched as every remaining center representative stood in unison and moved silently for the exit, pointedly avoiding his gaze to join the radicals outside, no doubt. We have taken all the necessary steps to ensure that political stability in this nation is maintained, that our nation is never again led astray by short-sighted idealism and ignorance. Our eternal majority over the South shall be the bulwark ensuring that the mistakes of the Kennedy president presidency are never repeated. Him and now, segregation is an American tradition, and those who would seek to trample on our flag with the mixing of the races and false equality shall never again rise to challenge it. Uh, let's see, there's chanting, it thundered across the nation basically. Uh, whether America would starve out on scales was less certain soon, so the National Progressive Party just grows more unified, even though the center party just stormed out. That doesn't make sense. Um, it should say that, like, we should just get a flat popularity boost to the MPPFR. That's how that probably should have gone. Anyway, so so just to wrap up my my tangent uh, about the paper. So I remember I was I was I was submitting the paper, and like the professor, she was a big fan of the Gladiator. Um, and and uh, I was so afraid of what my grade was going to be, but then it came back, and at the at the end she basically said this was very harsh, but well argued. Ninety four, and I went, woo! All right. <laughs> yeah. So that's you know she was a great professor. Those are the good ones, you know. With a good professor, you shouldn't be able to know their biases, unless you know it's about like if they like a film or not. Who cares? But, um, like for example, uh, I remember I also took this other class that was on the history of the Supreme Court in the United States, and um, I think it was from yeah yeah it had to have been for a midterm yeah it was it was for a midterm one of the questions like there was an essay question on the midterm uh, that said um, if john marshall was alive today it, it was basically i don't remember the exact wording but it was basically if john marshall was alive today who what block would he vote with in um in the supreme court as it, as it currently stands which was this was in uh when was this well yeah well, this is better ginsburg was still alive so um so there was no uh you didn't have a uh oh my god i'm blinking out the, the, her replacement ah brain work not good now um so so anyway uh I, i'm not gonna say what i what i what my argument was but i just remember afterwards um she she turned she turned back in you know it was a couple of class days later she turns back in everybody's midterms and she says 
Okay, let's talk about, uh, let's kind of go over this thing, and she was going over it, and then eventually she goes, gets to the question of uh, the John Marshall thing, and she goes, I do not care who you would say she'd vote with. I wanted you to provide evidence uh, on Jim Crow's eulogy. Eulogy, what? Uh, as the day of the national of the MPP's first party caucus since... Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we're good. We're good. First party caucus since the pre death of President Kennedy approached. Many wondered what the agenda of the day would be. Most were almost certain Thurman would speak in regards to the Civil Rights Act. A cult in its enforcement, at least, if not outright revoke, was the almost assured point of call expected from the president. And when he took the podium to speak... To the assembled politicians, he did indeed open with a talk on the fated matter, yet nobody presented, nobody present expected what he was about to say. Um, Thurman conceded to the concerned forces of the center and the bewildered far right that he could not allow himself to touch President Kennedy's most prestigious achievement. In the interests of party unity and memory of President Kennedy, in the name of bringing stability back to America, Thurman vowed that he would leave the act in place. Uh, after a long day of discussions, uh, let's see, yeah, so Thurman just basically promises the far right, like, we're gonna do other things, though. Uh, they accepted that a party and nation brought together was far more important than an unrepentant reaction. Sometimes we have to admit that the past is the past, and nice, we got some political power off that. Okay, economy, can we maybe construct some things every once in a while again? Uh, there we go, we've got 13 whole consumer good factories. Wow. Look at that, 20% utilization. And uh, we should be still fixing our deficit. Not, not like it's too late, really, but what is happening? Do not crash on me. Matei, the Italian governor of the Gulf has been overthrown. Ironic, he could save the nation from death, but not his administration. Did I ever tell you of the, the, the tale of, or wait, what was it? Was it was the Plagueis, the something or other? It's like the tale of Mus Benito Mussolini. He was a powerful fascist lord who could even stop empire, or I don't know, who could even stop Ethiopians from being free, barely. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I should have thought of something. The mountains burn with the fires of liberty. Okay, so the Caucasus are just splitting up. Luibov Lysenko. This sounds familiar. Hmm. I'll have to look her up. Her name sounds quite familiar. Uh, she has a bio there, but it's like in this world. Lysenko. Oh, yeah. So so, so the Supreme Court thing. Yeah. So the professor, she's just going, I do not care who you said John Marshall would vote for. I don't care if you said he'd vote with the liberals. I don't care if you said he would vote with the conservatives on the court. Uh, she's like, now, if you wrote in your paper, though, well, John Marshall was a federalist and uh, a lot of the conservatives on the on the bench are members of the federalist society. So he would have voted for them because of that. No. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, it's like those same people who are like, let me tell you about how the Nazis were socialists and communists, actually, because they were the national socialists, after all. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, we've spent all of our money in Russia. Well, in a couple of months, I think they're going to get, they're going to make their, their plays an end to outdated tactics. That sounds great to me. There's still so much. Sail to Scandinavia. Oh, you can open up contact with them. How interesting. Oh, is this freaking, um... No, no, it's not. Or is it the the, the, the Zlataust or whatever it is? Is this the... Were, were these originally the ones who just, they sell guns to everybody? Even other warlords who are going to fight them eventually? Is it, anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, uh, okay. How long has this episode been going anyway? Okay, I was just thinking because I know there's been some cuts. Uh, yeah, and then, and then after this, I'm going to try to see what I could do about the CPU. You guys probably won't even notice when I make the changes to the OBS, and I'm, I'm sure that it's because it's 
it's like let me you know it's funny what did it say in that event it's like trying to get a splinter with a sledgehammer that's basically what i'm doing to hearts of iron 4 right now i'm 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 not streaming really i'm just recording but i'm doing it at a rate that's like triple what i usually do um through the obs so that's definitely what's causing the slowdown or at least i'm pretty darn sure we don't have rubber there we go PD certain not gonna do that yeah we're about to have a new year new budget so what is this the we have done what we must it was never in doubt that President uh, Thurman's presidency would have its detractors uh, some even dare to call the president a fascist a racist and a villain they question our methods we will let them keep yelling keep throwing their insults we were never gonna win those hearts anyway our priority is to secure a bright and righteous future for the United States we can rest easy knowing we will we will always be remembered as the men that saved our nation. Alright. So let's give me political popularity two. And then we we still don't have the all as well, but I'm guessing that that's what's gonna happen, because if we do that and it's still not all as well, well then I'm gonna be worried. We can still take good behavior they have not. Interesting. Hmm. Merry Christmas. And happy Boxing Day. Oh yeah, let's check the economy. So now that we're not... Now that we put things up... Yeah, we're still... The deficit thing is still pretty dang good. So if I did something like this and this, though, do that and that. Uh, yeah, annual deficit. We're still in a good position. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, who's in charge? Ho Chi Minh ended up taking charge in Vietnam, right? Yep, there he is. With no tree. What's this though? Agrarian society, rubber exports. Recruitable population minus 100%. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. Hmm. We can increase NPP unity if we wanted to. Same thing with RD unity. Which is what I think I want to do. Let's get Strom Thorman out of here. I would imagine that there's, there would be quite a backlash to him. Um, so as soon as we get the ability to, we're going to start supporting the Republican Democrats to try to get somebody else in office. We'll have to see who is nominatable, huh? I'm sure that some of you already have a pretty good idea of where I'm going to go, though. Uh at least for this first campaign. I definitely want to do more paths of the United States. I know I've said it before, but I do mean it. Maybe this could become what I, what I could totally see myself doing. I, I have said that I want to play, uh, th there's going to be this uh, South America thing, uh, and I want to play Bolivia. But outside of that, I could definitely see myself just bouncing back and forth between play Russia, play the United States, play in Russia, play in the United States, just back and forth constantly. Sometimes there'll probably be live streams, things like that. Um, but there we go, new national focus. Uh, yep, there it is. We can. We are fighting tyranny since 1776. Now, how far can we actually get here? This is 21 days, 28 days was this greatest story never told. A crew drawing of a tank with a Dixie flag rolling over a Nazi flag with a hammer and sickle instead of swastika within a thought balloon coming out of George Lincoln Rockwell's head. The novel is a strange ramble about how if Rockwell hadn't been assassinated by judo Bolsheviks, he would have created the greatest story in mankind's history and goes on to blame his death on Jews being afraid of what truths he can write. <laughs> The novel has garnered attention all due to its bizarre tone and claims such as Nazi Germany being a judo Bolshevik bastion, Bolshevik bastion due to it being, quote, led by a party who was socialist before it is nationalist. That's really funny considering what I was talking about earlier. Uh, 
among many other astonishing claims, which are surprisingly comic, hence its widespread success in the U.S. and abroad. I never thought I could laugh like this again, oh lord. <laughs> uh-huh. So see the Yaki's and the far right are voting together, NPP left and NPP center are voting together. Hmm. Let's see. I think. All right. Well, well. I think it's been long enough for an episode. But let me see. Let me get a count first to see how far we can actually get before election day. Maybe, maybe getting the ports back could be Strom Thurmond's legacy. Introspection. Uh, let's see. So many colorful names for him. You super president, snake in candy's boot, even America's Hitler. Uh, what would history think of him? What would they think of these admittedly blatantly un-American actions he had taken since day one? The thought momentarily disquieted him, and soon it passed. His heart hardened, and still God said, let my people go. <laughs> yeah, was, whenever I hear heart hardening, I always think of the Exodus story. Uh, anger flared. What did they know? Everything he was doing was good. Everything he was doing was righteous, and he would keep doing it until he saw his plans through to the end. This is what America needs. All means are justified. Okay, so can we get a count now? Uh, so this is 21 days, 28 days. It looks like, are all the rest of these 28 days? Okay, not quite. On to Tokyo means we need one of them. So I think this is like a we split. Although these don't appear to be mutually exclusive. But let's pretend we're just going to go down one. So let's call, let's call these months each time. Even though it's actually slightly less, so one, two, three. Okay, yeah, we're doing this one. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're gonna just barely, I think, be able to do this before um, before the war with or before before um, election day, nineteen sixty-eight. So perhaps perhaps Thurman can make his legacy. Uh, negotiating these ports back in his final year in office. Because there's also, they, they wait for inauguration. That's what we did back in 64, right? Which I liked. I really like that. Um, and that is something I hope to see in the future more of. Um, so yeah, I don't think we need to, like, unify. We can kind of give them some factories or whatever. We don't need to unify the the uh, the OFN. The OFN's already been doing great. Um, yeah, our unity's been high. It's never really seemed to be threatened. So, feed the beast, war needs men. This will unlock decisions for building military factories. Better protests now than draft riots while the Japanese are shelling things. A bit of domestic discontent. Why would there even be... Oh, the draft... Oh, so it looks like either way the draft's going to get reinstated. So we're, we're firing up the, the nation either way. OFN gives Angola its independence. I'm sorry. I thought that we already did that, like, a couple of years ago or something. What? All right, weird. Uh, what else we got here? Right, I could keep shipping some help over to Russia. Help, uh, excuse me, over to Russia. But, okay, cogs in the machine, and then this is, like, fire up the people. So it's essentially... Destabilizing pacifism. We're going to attempt to pass a bill through Congress. The Women's Occupational Military Equality Normalization Act. Also known as... Act in Congress. Also known as the Women Act. Uh, this could be an erosion of traditional gender roles, but it can unite war hawks and progressives. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay. Fun the skunk works. Ready for battle. Um. Disturbingly bourgeois. We need to put up some patriotic recruitment posters. Uh, okay. The Akagi, the Japanese, took on another form of the artistic zeitgeist. Okay. Hmm. 
I think it's more fitting with Strom Thurmond if we if we like crank up the draft, do the aggressive stuff. Uh, ready for war to rally the wings of our party. See Hall, see all, hear all counterintelligence reports. On to Tokyo. So hold on, I'm just kind of getting a sense. Uh, if atomic weapons accuracy is not the biggest concern, a peaceful withdrawal of the Japanese garrisons would sue our right righteous wrath. Hmm. Ah. Uh, okay. So wait, are they saying that the, are the intercontinental missiles in the ports in Hawaii or? I don't know. It seems like we're going to try and negotiate with them of some kind. So, so what I think we're going to do, yeah, we're going to head down this tree, the right side of the tree, and then do on to Tokyo and try to get the treaty ports back. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to do that in time or stuff before the election. But probably a little bit because I was just rounding up to the month, but 21 days is actually just three weeks. So, Anyway, I'm Concrete History Games. So I'll see you in the next episode where we're hopefully... Uh, the, the, the speed will be better, but also uh, the quality will still look virtually the same to you all. I'll see you then. Bye.